Hello and welcome to Tony's Bonsai. Today I'm going to be putting together a large silver birch group planting and look at the size of the pot. Woo! It's a good sized pot. First job is to just cover all the holes with some scrim tape. I've decided to add some tie wires to this because I think it might be quite tricky to hold together. So I've got some plastic coated steel wire here. This will uh, this will allow me to tie everything in nice and tight. I've applied four pieces of wire, so I should have quite a bit of holding power there. And I've got more wire and extra holes if I want to add more as and when I put the trees together. I've long been a fan of silver birch. I've got quite a few in my collection, but they're all individual trees. And I've always fancied putting together a large group planting. I watched a video by Nigel Saunders a year or two ago and I was really quite inspired. And then my friend Jason mentioned it in his video the other day. So I went back and re-watched it. And I've recently been fortunate to get hold of loads of really good silver birch off a friend of mine, Chris. And I think they're going to work really well in this planting. So let's take a look at some trees. I'm going to start off with the tree that I think I see as the primary tree in this planting. It's a lovely birch. It's beginning to go silver in color. It's got a nice thick base, but it's also quite straight. I think that could work really well. I do have a crazy branch coming off that's got to go. So I'll get rid of that one there. Now, it has got a nice base, so I could put it this way as well. And by doing that, I could sit it quite close to the front of the pot, which is nice. So I think I'll go with that. It's got a lot of roots, so I'm going to take some of these longer roots off just to make some space, obviously for all the other trees that are going in. There. So I think that's a good start there. I mean that that's going nowhere, that's great. So that's the first tree. I think I would like it slightly over like there. That's nice. The next tree has got some superb taper. It's got the silver trunk again, which is nice. I'll take these roots there off. They're no good. Rather than use any formal plan, I like to produce groups by just sort of going with the flow. and just sort of working trees into position, looking at them. See, I put this one slightly further forward than this. This small one here is a beauty. I think that'll sit in there really nice, just at the front. The roots of this tree came to the edge, so ideally I need one sit a small one at the edge that I can almost put underneath the roots of this one, like that, there. So almost working it within the roots of the first tree, there. So that puts something over here, that's good. As I say, there's not, a, not an amazing amount of planning going into this. But I like to style these just off instinct, really. Now, these are nice. This is a nice tree. It's got some huge roots. These roots have to go. I'm not confident this one's going to make it really. It's not got a lot of roots on it, but it's got some, and in my experience, silver birch are pretty good, pretty good rooters. I'm expecting some of these not to make it in the long run, but if I put lots in, then I 
I should have a decent chance of quite a few of them making it. Yeah, that's a nice one. It's quite straight and this needs to go perhaps somewhere in here like that. This is a good one. It's got quite a small root base and it naturally leans out. So this will sit really well on the edge of the composition there. That's a good, that's a good spot. I really like that one. So as I keep saying, I'm just sort of throwing these in. Generally putting the smaller ones towards the back. That's a good one. And even though they're quite thin, they've got some uh, really good chunky bases. So they have that naturally aged appearance, even though they're quite small, which is great. Got a nice little tree here. And I'm wondering if I can get that in here. Again, down sort of underneath the roots of the first tree. Just, just in there. That's nice. Now I need to sort of step back now, take a look at that. Yeah, it's beginning to look, beginning to look like a proper birch forest. Now, once I've got these trees in, my plan is to straighten them up. You know, I've done forests that are not straight, which is fine, but I do want these to be fairly vertical if I can, if I can achieve that. But I do want this to be a really crammed, packed composition. and So I want to try and get all the trees I can in. I'll turn it round to the back. We've got quite a space here. So... This could be a good place for... A tree like that. And I think, just personally, one of the good things about creating a group in this style is that you're adding, because I'm not thinking about it too much, I'm adding a definite randomness into it. And sometimes if you overthink things, you naturally end up organising, arranging and organising everything so that it, it kind of fits in. Whereas... If you just push things in, you're almost recreating nature in a, to a certain extent by, by allowing just the random randomness to come into play. So it's, it's got quite a bit at the back here now. Perhaps one more there would be good. This is a nice small one that can just perhaps fit in. I think I'll push them back to make some space. Get that in there. And this is the perfect time as well for uh, for moving these birds. They're just budding, just beginning to bud. I love that randomness at the back. I'm thinking I need something possibly this tree here is just sort of on its own. Well, that's good because that is a primary tree. So I like the fact that that is just sitting there and is clearly visible. So I think I'll try and squeeze this one in at the edge. I want to try and leave that space there. So we've got all this happening there. Do I need this last tree? Or should I save this in case any of them die? 
I think perhaps this could go in at the back. And if I have lots of trees at the back, it really will create that illusion that you're looking into a proper forest and you sort of almost can't see, see out of the back of it. I think the only problem at the moment, as I look, is this tree here. It's very thick and heavy at the base, so it goes up, it kind of inverse tapers and it's not got a lot going for it, that tree. So I think that one can go. And I've got one here. That's a, not, a lot nicer. It's got a nice white trunk. It's got some good movement. So this can kind of point out of the group. And ideally I would like, I'd like it to be a bit of a hill. So I'm going to get some soil in. Like that. And then try to raise some of these trees up. Especially this, this primary tree here. Get a bit of more soil under that. Just these two that are kind of lined up a bit. There's lots of trees lined up, but I think if I can just move that and create just a bit of a gap there. Yeah, that looks better. I've got a little nice little twin trunk one here. Can I get that in anywhere? It's not got any silver colour on it though, but it is beginning to go silver. So it could work. I don't want to add trees just for the sake of it. I'm really liking this. I think this is looking great. I think we need something here coming out and this could be a place to use this small twin trunk tree out here. So yeah, I will get that in. So this, this could just be worked in the edge here. And the next thing I want to look at is I want to see how vertical these trees are. I've not really looked at that. I don't care if they're not bang on vertical, but I want the general sort of, well, it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm going to come out a bit further. I'm quite happy with how these trees are all sitting, apart from perhaps this one here that's just slanting across a bit too much. And I'm wondering if I can just raise it up a bit like that. I'm not doing too much change, but I'm just taking it off that kind of severe slant. I do like the slant because it's realistic. This is going to take quite a while. I need to go around all of the trees, working this soil down. It's all in fairly solidly now, so it's time to just add some some of these wires to just just sort of secure everything in place. This is all looking really nice now, and I'd kind of like to leave all these lovely trunks and branches on because they look so good, but I think I need to remove them at least some of the height. So just to give it more chance of surviving, I need to take the overall height down. Now I do generally leave a stump on silver birch when I'm cutting them because they have a tendency to die back a bit like maples. Couldn't see that, the sun was in my eyes. Ah, that's better. So, I'm now just going to work round 
the whole composition, just reducing this height, like this one for example, it's far too, far too tall. But I also want to leave enough leaves on the tree so that the tree does all right and survives. Like this one here, I can't really afford to take too much off that because it's not got loads anyway. So I'll leave the branches tall and I'll just clip a little bit off the top. So, so it's really kind of common sense, a lot of this work. Although I'm pruning now for the health of the tree, I am trying to use things like directional pruning a little bit, just to thinking about the future growth of the trees and what will be best for them in terms of the sort of design. This branch here is a good example. It's sticking right out the back of the composition. It's not in a good spot but I'm cautious about taking too much off this tree. Although we've got some branches at the top and the side, so I can. And and I'll just shorten it back a bit there. And these can always be pruned in the future. And I can, I've got years to work on, you know, this overall design. It's not a problem. I do have a branch in the centre there that I'm going to remove in the future, so that one can go now. And there are the odd dead. There's the odd dead branch as well. Like that one. I've got some sphagnum moss mixed up with some normal moss and I'm just going to spread that around on the surface and this will just help maintain the moisture and it should develop a nice surface of moss which will look nice. It's the next morning and I wanted to show you this not in bright sunlight because when it's in that bright sunlight, it does look dramatic, but you don't necessarily get the full view. I'm really happy with this. It looks good from both sides and the ends. So this is something that would be, would work well on display. But this is, I'm really happy with the front, with the way this tree just sits behind these Well, there's no doubt in my mind, this is one of my favorite projects to date. And I'm really going to look forward to updating you on this in the spring and the summer. I think it should look fantastic when it comes into leaf. As always, thanks for joining me. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.